This is a very difficult video for me to do for many reasons, including the fact that it's about a journalist who lost his life in Kenya, thousands of kilometers away from his home in Pakistan. But more importantly, it is because it is on a very sensitive issue. Yeah, this may not be obvious to some of us, but I understand why that would not be so obvious. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few facts and I'm sure you're going to join the dots. Now, all this is happening when already locally something is happening to do with the police that is strange, stranger than fiction. You see, one of the first things that the new administration, the new Ruto administration has done is to disband the special service unit within the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. Under normal circumstances, and I know many of us may not be aware of this, under normal circumstances, what would have happened is that these officers would have simply been redeployed, transferred to another department within the DCI or outside the DCI, they're police officers. Now I can already hear somebody telling me, come on Chris, these people are accused of something very serious. Wali Maliza, Mgeni, foreigners, and their taxi driver. This is serious. That's what they're accused of. How can you say that they should simply be redeployed? Now hear me out. In case you didn't know, just know this today, yeah, from the son of a cop. Every police officer is very careful about one thing. They would not do anything without orders. Orders from above. And so the strange thing here is that we have four police officers from the DCI, from that disbanded unit, who have been arraigned in court. And nobody is talking about where the orders came from. Trust me, a police officer cannot move a pencil from one office to the other without permission or an order from a superior officer. And for something as serious as this, you can be sure that the orders came from high above. There is a video that was on this channel, but is no longer there, Ilitolewa, Nasio Mimi Nilitoa, which was focusing on a notorious policeman in this Lee area. Ambaya likuwa kimaliza watu of you of you. Now in that particular video clip, you can clearly see the officer talking on his mobile phone yeah, before executing an order, which I would bet you was coming through that same mobile phone. That is how these things work. So I find this particular case very strange. And the two Indian nationals in this particular case, who were finished off, allegedly by the police, were in the country to do what? They were in the country as part of the campaign team of William Samuel Ruto, campaign team for the presidency. And they were, wait for this one, digital experts. Hmm. So this case is very strange. And so even as we puzzle over this one, then this latest incident of famous Pakistani news anchor Ashad Sharif comes up. And it is even stranger. The circumstances don't make sense. For starters, the Kenyan police has claimed responsibility. And in normal circumstances, the Pakistanis 
would be up in arms, complaining, putting pressure on action to be taken against the Kenyan police. But is that what is happening? No. Instead, most Pakistanis do not believe it was the Kenyan police. They don't believe it was a case of mistaken identity, as the police are telling us. Why? How can they know, sitting in Pakistan, 10,000 kilometers away from Kenya, how can they be so authoritative? How can they know the circumstances? Well, let's back up a little and highlight a few facts. Yeah, of course, you'll join the dots. The late Ashad Sharif was on the run. Yeah, he was avoiding arrest in his home country for sedition against the current government. And Bona Sharif is a firm supporter of the Prime Minister was impeached before the current leader took over. Yeah, he was impeached by Parliament. Imran Khan, who is a very famous former cricket player, a populist leader, well liked by a vast majority of Pakistani people. And this whole drama started in August this year. Yeah. When Ashad Sharif hosted the leader of Imran Khan's political party, the immediate former prime minister. And the name of this party leader is Shabazz Gil. And as is to be expected in that interview, Shabazz Gil fired many barbs at the current Pakistani government. And super fascinatingly, what really got the government worked up, yeah, the current government, was when Bonagil said something which should be very familiar to Kenyans from the events in our dear country in the year 2017, yeah, after that very hotly contested presidential election between Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. Bonagil said that junior officers yeah, in the military should not follow orders from their superiors. If these orders are against the will of the vast majority of Pakistani people. What? Some of us will remember that in 2017, ODM said that the police should not follow orders from their superiors if those orders are against the will of the Kenyan people. And after this particular broadcast in Pakistan, yeah, the host TV station, Ari News, was immediately taken off air. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Oh yes. Very familiar to Kenyans and what has been happening here in the past. And then they ordered for the arrest of everybody who was involved in that kadrama. Yeah, that includes the late Ashad Sharif, who was the host journalist. And Buona Gil, the party leader, who had said these things that were somehow very offensive to the government. But Ashad Sharif fled the country. He managed to get out yeah, before his arrest and headed to London. And he must have felt that Kenya, which is further away from Pakistan, would be safer for him than the UK. Now, some more information you may not have. The Pakistani intelligence service has quite a reputation yeah, of carrying out efficient activities outside the borders of its country. Yeah, let me just leave it at that. And so Mr. Sharif has been living in hiding in Kenya. Yeah, and it seems, according to me a mistake, he was interacting with other Pakistanis within the country. I wouldn't do that, yeah, because you don't know which Pakistani has links back home with the people who are hunting you. Yeah. Anyway, I'm guessing that Bona Sharif felt that it was safer to move around at night, to travel at night, because he left the entertainment spot somewhere in Magadi. 
past 9 p.m. at night. And then some very strange things happened, yeah, leading to the demise of one Ashad Sharif. For starters, we all know roadblocks in Kenya. When there's a roadblock, you cannot get past it. You cannot speed away from it. How? Because the police account is that Ashad Sharif and his brother, because his brother was driving the vehicle, were stopped at the roadblock, but instead they sped away. Very strange, not normal. And then eyewitnesses say they heard three gunshots, and most people in the area were not alarmed. It was normal, because there is a GSU training camp a mere 500 meters away from where the incident happened. But the police version is different. They say that there was an exchange of fire. They say that somebody from the vehicle in which Ashad Sharif was traveling in fired back at the police and even injured an officer in the arm. And it gets even stranger. Because if you're trying to immobilize a vehicle that has sped away from a roadblock, where do you aim? You aim for the driver, not the passenger. Now, the most distinct holes on the side of the passenger, the side where Bona Ashad Sharif was seated at the front, the three most visible holes, two at the back and one at the front, are very perplexing. Because if you compare the two holes at the back with the one in front, None of the two holes at the back are consistent with a trajectory that would give you the hole at the front. I'm sure you get my meaning. Another mystery. If I was to speculate, the hole at the front looks like it was fired from the front. But hold on a minute. He was fleeing a roadblock. So was there somebody in front of the vehicle? Too many questions. Now, the vehicle involved was a Toyota Land Cruiser, a very powerful machine that can gather speed very quickly. Now, think about it for a minute. There are not many people, let alone in Kenya, there are not many people in the world who can take just two shots or three shots at a rapidly moving Toyota Land Cruiser and at least one of those shots hits the target. And assuming, actually speculating, that the front hole came from the front, there are not many people in the world that can take a single shot of a moving vehicle and get the target. And it gets even more stranger. According to police reports, there are several bullet holes, including one on the side of the vehicle. What? To be more precise, on the left side of the rear right door of the vehicle, that's the door at the back, on the left side. Wow, this is a real mystery. Bottom line, if we are to believe the police version, there are many different shooters based in many different positions. What? Does that make sense to you? Even if you're not an expert, does that make sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. But what most Kenyans should be very worried about is the negative image on the country to possible tourists who want to come to Kenya. What do you think they're thinking right now? Because this incident is all over the news. In the international media. We all know that Kenya relies very heavily on revenue from tourists. And times are hard right now. This is the worst of times for anything to interfere with our tourism industry and visitors coming to Kenya. But to end my show, I want to ask a question, a speculative question. We know that in the Kenyan case of the DCI unit that has been disbanded, the four officers 
accused yeah, of the murder of two Indian nationals. Yeah. And we know that those two Indian nationals were supposed to be working on the campaign of President William Samuel Ruto, the presidential campaign. My question is, is it in any way linked to Raila Odinga's current visit to India? It's just a question. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.